melting glaciers, microplastics in the ocean and fires in the Amazon. News about climate change is disturbing and often contradictory, especially on social media. Still, the online world offers many ways to get reliable info and get active. Digital environmental protection, our topic today on SHIFT. I know my own eco-balance, well, roughly. The average German produces 9 tons of CO2 per year. And each European generates some 24 kilos of plastic waste. To me, that sounds like a lot. But how bad is it? By comparison, in India, the average person produces just 11 kilos of plastic waste. But where does my garbage actually go? And how much plastic winds up in the world's oceans? 8 million tons a year. That's what Science magazine estimates. Environmental pollution and climate change are global issues. So it's not just me. Experts also want to get their hands on reliable data. I am dreaming to have a huge portal which contains all the standardized marine litter and microplastic data from all over the world, from all marine realms, so that I can do whatever analysis I need on that data. But this is a dream. Mina Tegman is trying to make that dream come true at the Alfred Wegener Institute for Polar and Marine Research in Bremerhaven. She's part of a team of scientists who are analyzing the increasing pollution of the oceans. They've compiled their results and created an online world map that's accessible to everyone. Mina Tegman's research focuses on the question, where does the plastic waste in the oceans come from? She's helping to program the litter-based data bank to present this information in a form that's easy to understand. Our basic idea is to make scientific data visible and understandable for everybody. And the best way for that is to create some maps and some graphs. Litterbase is an online database that's open to everyone. Graphics show the results of more than a thousand scientific studies. On a world map, it's easy to see where research expeditions have already taken place. The latest results from the worldwide scientific community are regularly fed into the database. The aim is to make the global issue of marine pollution more accessible and easily understood, including to non-scientists. Nowadays, nobody reads anything anymore, especially because of social media. And people like to have pictures. Having these maps and these analysis graphs are really providing useful information in really short time to the public. The Global Forest Change Database at the University of Maryland also uses a map to show the state of the world's forests. Since 2013, users have been able to call up info based on satellite images. They can see the effects of forest fires, illegal logging, and reforestation over long periods. The Global Forest Watch platform is also dedicated to protecting forests and their inhabitants. It combines satellite technology with open data and crowdsourcing. Temperatures, CO2 levels, and even current weather phenomena can be found on the website Earth Now. Here, U.S. space agency NASA presents comprehensive satellite data in real time. You can track how tropical storms or forest fires, like here in Australia, are developing on Earth Now. Various natural disasters are also explained. The Alfred Wegener Institute also plans to incorporate non-scientifically compiled data. Melanie Bergmann wants holidaymakers to upload observations about beaches and coastlines. The topic of marine litter in particular lends itself well to citizen scientists, because trash is something everyone can relate to. Everyone knows what a bottle or a plastic bag is, and this helps us to cover a much better area geographically, and to better fill in the white spots we still have on our map. As a citizen scientist, I can help organizations collect reliable information online. A good example is the app Literati. It lets ordinary folks document cases of environmental pollution and invite others to help clean them up. Information is important, but 
taking action is even more vital. And these days, there's no excuse for saying you don't know how to help. Especially after we show you these innovative ideas, which make it even easier to help save the planet. There could be anywhere from 86 to 150 million tons of waste plastic in the world's oceans. It's collected there since the material became popular in the 1950s. Fishing it out using conventional methods would take decades and cost billions. The NGO Ocean Cleanup is banking on a digital solution. Intelligent trawl nets steer autonomously towards floating islands of garbage after receiving relevant data through sensors. The data is provided in real time via satellite. Spanish project CO2 Revolution aims to replant the rainforest with the help of high tech. Huge swathes of the forest have been destroyed in recent decades. CO2 Revolution has developed an intelligent seed called iSeed. It's launched from drones, which can cover huge areas quickly. The drones have access to data like soil conditions and climate and use GPS to plant the right seeds in the right place. Nigerian firm Mkopa has developed a method of bringing clean energy to remote regions of Africa using old cell phones. The electricity comes from a solar panel on the roof. The mobile phone functions as a power distribution center and an electric meter, making power stations and electrical grids superfluous. Some 400,000 people now receive green electricity this way. The effects of climate change and environmental pollution are experienced differently around the globe. They often go unseen in the places where most of the waste is created. In 2017, Germany exported 24.3 million tons of its trash. The industrialized nations of the Northern Hemisphere produce the most CO2. But they haven't yet experienced the devastating effects of climate change felt by those in the South. But digital solutions can help those hardest hit. Where oases and rivers were once found, there's now only arid desert. Climate change is already a reality in East Africa, and it's endangering the livelihoods of herders in the region. If there's no water, their herds die. AfriScout is an app which helps Africa's herders track down increasingly rare sources of water using the latest satellite data. Climate change is also affecting Africa's farmers. Extreme weather, such as long periods of drought and torrential storms, are causing damage like they've never seen before. That's where the Agrix app comes in. It helps farmers recognize pests and plant diseases early so they can save their crops. The app uses AI, so every time it's used, its database expands and its prognoses improve. In South America, the destruction of the rainforest is a major problem. Now a digital warning system should help Brazilian Environmental Research Institute IPAM fight fire clearing. Not only can smartphones warn about these fires, they're also a weapon in the battle against deforestation. Because the quicker the fires are reported, the quicker they can be put out. Sharing is caring can sometimes apply in the digital world too. Every piece of information that users pass on can help other people directly unlike my last selfie on Instagram. So what can I do personally to actively protect the environment and combat climate change? There are tons of local projects and even apps that can help you do your bit. Here are a few that we found especially interesting. It all started with the big cleanup drives in Berlin. But putting out an online call to combat pollution locally was only the beginning for Plan A. Its CEO knows that solving big problems requires big data. Climate change is not one problem. Climate change is a lot of problems that are intertwined. And our data approach helps us actually untangle this complexity. We use the data to pinpoint exactly the locations and the types of issues that happen around the world that need to be immediately acted on. The Berlin-based startup analyzes data from research institutions around the world. Based on its findings, Plan A contacts individuals, companies and community groups in the affected areas. The only prerequisite is that they want to do something to combat climate change. 
Plan A publicizes their projects and allows users to help fund them. Every plan is thoroughly checked for its viability and transparency. Then there's the Oro Eco app. Enter your daily habits with a few clicks and the app will calculate your carbon footprint and show how to shrink it. It also invites you to be a climate hero by supporting carbon offset projects that help people and the planet. The CO2 tracking app Reforestum also focuses on individual consumption. You can use the app to create and manage your own forest, thereby reducing your carbon footprint. Everyone can do something to save the planet. The climate protection has made people scared, tired and um, unclear on what they need to do, I think because of the language that is being used. We speak uh, in a way that doesn't necessarily explain to people what the issues are. We should be focusing more on actionable advices rather than simply speaking with big words about the issues. The digital world is full of good intentions, but can we really stop the destruction of the environment and climate change online? It's a bit paradoxical. After all, the internet itself consumes vast amounts of energy and mountains of discarded smartphones are part of the problem, not the solution. Yet, digital technologies could play a major role. First, big data can help us reach a greater scientific awareness. Climate change is a global phenomenon, so gathering huge amounts of data from around the world is vital. Second, they could help to relieve some of the worst effects. For instance, through real-time analysis, which could help get aid to affected areas quickly. And third, and this is where we come in, via apps or platforms, users can contribute directly, whether by collecting data or helping right where it's needed. For instance, I could do my part by joining a local organization. What's your contribution to combating climate change? Let us know here, for example. That's it for today. Bye.